thanks for joining me on Life and Surround. Today we're discussing Surround About Ride by the Dukes of Stratosphere. Alright, so Surround About Ride by the Dukes of Stratosphere. This is a new CD Blu-ray release that encompasses the two Dukes of Stratosphere albums, 25 O'Clock and Sonic Sunspot. They were both released in the 80s in the midst of XTC albums from The Big Express through Skylarking and on to Oranges and Lemons. The intention of the Dukes of Stratosphere projects were to pay homage to 1967 through 1969 psychedelic records, such as from the Beatles, the Beach Boys, and Pink Floyd, most notably in my opinion. I hear some other influences, and other influences are also listed in the liner notes. Care was taken to use vintage gear, with very few exceptions, to use the methods that were employed in 1967 through 69, and to write in a similar style. I would say the main differences between these recordings and actual recordings from 67 to 69 are that these albums were recorded to 24 track instead of 4 track or 8 track, and that in very few cases modern gear was used, such as a Roland keyboard. The attempt was still made to emulate a classic sound, however. No computers were used, and the mixes themselves were a live, unrepeatable event. Alright, so what do you get in Sonic Sunspot? First of all, it comes in this slipcase, which gives you your cover art and disc information on the back. And let me see here, you get a CD with the new stereo remixes of both 25 O'Clock and Sonic Sunspot plus some bonus tracks. You get a Blu-ray which is basically a box set on a disc. You not only get the 2019 remixes in stereo, you get 2019 remixes in 5.1, both LPCM and DTS HD Master and high-res stereo. You also get the instrumental versions of most of the songs, plus you get the original stereo flat transfers. This is very cool because, like I said, those mixes were a custom one-time event between John Leckie, the original producer and mixer, and the band. So if you have any questions as to whether Stephen Wilson and Andy Partridge paid sufficient tribute to the original project, just go listen to the original included on the Blu-ray. So that takes care of the slipcase. Because I ordered early, and I happened to order from Burning Shed, I also received a signed postcard from EIEI -E Owen, who is really Ian Gregory, the drummer on the project. Other people have received postcards from Sir John Johns, who is Andy Partridge himself. And I don't know if people are receiving postcards from any of the other members, like Red Curtain or Lord Cornelius Plum, who are Colin and Dave. Also included in the set is this booklet, which uh, gives you two essays, one from original producer John Leckie, who goes by a pseudonym as well. I'll see if I can pronounce it for you. Swami Anand Nagara, he gives more or less a track-by-track -track account and discusses some of his techniques and lists some of the influences on the record. And you get this very cool page of art. And you also then get an essay from EIEI -E Owen. So on the topic of Ian, he used a vintage Ludwig drum set with vintage Zildjian cymbals, and they were dampened with tea towels in an effort to emulate Ringo Starr's own sound. A vintage bass guitar, a precision bass with foam under the strings was also used. Vintage guitars, mellotrons, Hammond organs, tape effects strung throughout the studio. So as I said, great care was taken to try and use 
vintage gear. Other notable sounds on the album include theremin, that weird sound from a lot of sci-fi movies, a saw cutting wood, children's narration, laughter tracks, vocals sped up and slowed down to achieve a higher and a lower pitch, and samples from sound effects LPs, including some trumpet samples, which to me remind me of Sketches of Spain by Miles Davis. So then that leaves us with this digipack. And on one side we get this eyeball art and some track information. And then on the other side we get band information. And it's in psychedelic text. So good luck reading it, but that's part of the fun. And then, importantly, inside we get the CD and the Blu-ray. So, a very compact set. This has exactly what I want. A CD for the car, a Blu-ray for the home theater, tons of content on the Blu-ray. Really, the only thing I'm hearing people miss is the video for Mole from the Ministry, but at least that's viewable elsewhere, and to me it's not a glaring omission. They must have had their reasons for not including it. They've kept the cost down. They're not charging you for a giant coffee table book, scarves and marbles, but you do get nice artwork, some essays. Those who ordered early get a signed postcard, which is kind of a personal touch from the band, which I really dig. Ultra high value, in my opinion. All right, so what about the Sonics? In my opinion, this sounds absolutely fabulous. Recently on the Life and Surround Facebook page, somebody commented that this is what Sgt. Pepper in 5.1 should have sounded like. And the way they put it was, if Giles had been more daring. But we need to remember that Sgt. Pepper's was recorded to four track with lots of ping-ponging and overdubs. So Giles did have a lot of material to work with, but not quite on the level of a recording that was initially put down on 24 track. I do agree though that, you know, the style of this closely matches Sgt. Pepper's and the aggressiveness of the mix is exactly what a surround nut would hope for. Hopefully we'll get the Sgt. Pepper's Atmos mix released at some point, and maybe that'll be more fun. One person has complained that the drums on Your Golden Dress sound a little bit distorted. I don't happen to hear that. And while this doesn't sound like a 1980s XTC record, it does sound like a late 60s psychedelic record. It sounds like an excellently recorded superb one. So you do get a dated sound, but I think the Sonics are stellar. The mix is super aggressive. Per usual with Steven Wilson, you get the lead vocal mostly isolated up in the center channel. You have drums and bass occupying the front left and right. You do also have some main guitars occasionally occupying the front left and right. Many of the keyboard sounds are relegated to the surrounds. Many of the background vocals also reside mostly in the surrounds as well as many sound effects. You also get some guitar overdubs in the surrounds, but sound effects can appear more or less anywhere in the surround field, as well as background vocals and pretty much anything else. I think part of the psychedelic effect of this mix is that things aren't just mixed to one place and left there for the entirety of the Blu-ray. You get a lot of active panning around the room, particularly with sound effects, and sometimes with main parts. This sounds awesome. The mix is awesome. I also love the content. To compare this to the recent 5.1 mix of Abbey Road, I would say this mix is every bit as good and a little bit more aggressive. I would say that the Sonics here are just as good. Content-wise, Abbey Road obviously is way more classic, but I think the material here is superbly done the writing style absolutely nails the period being honored, though by comparison, I believe the song content here is a bit more cynical compared to the adventurous innocence of those actual 60s psychedelic records. I believe what you get here is a look back through 20 years of hindsight that examines the ideals of those psychedelic recordings and judges that those ideals have largely failed. Examples are the flat tire on 
the cosmic bicycle not allowing the singer to get any higher. The empty accolades that are sent Albert Brown's way. You do get homages more or less directly to Paul McCartney, John Lennon, Sid Barrett, and Brian Wilson. Like 25 O'Clock has some obvious thematic resemblance to eight days a week. It's an impossible measure of time by one increment, right? But 25 O'Clock is not necessarily the love song that eight days a week is. It has a darker tone. So I would say that the Dukes of Stratosphere projects pay very close homage to the musical styling of 1960s psychedelia, but that thematically you get something a bit more evolved. And I find that absolutely fascinating. So far, my listens through Surroundabout Ride have been very enjoyable. I am thrilled with this. XTC and the Dukes of Stratosphere are among my current favorite artists because of their surround content. Surroundabout Ride is released as part of XTC's Surround Sound reissue series. They've once again teamed up with Stephen Wilson, who is pretty much my favorite mixing engineer in this day and age. He's pretty much the new Elliot Shiner, which is a good thing. The music is fun, engaging, very well done, thought-provoking even. The mix is crazy and wonderful for a surround head. Sonically, this is great. And the package has extremely high value. I'm not sure what else there is to say, so I will wrap up for now. Don't forget that if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're into surround music, XTC, the Dukes of Stratosphere. I have hundreds upon hundreds of more titles to get to, and I intend to. So stay tuned. Leave your comments. Thank you for your encouragement. Let me know what you think about Surroundabout Ride. Hopefully we'll get some more XTC and Surround soon. My guess would be Apple Venus. And until then, enjoy and live life in Surround.